With nothing but the odd speed bump between Bordeaux and Dax, the promise of one last bunch finish before the mountains was always going to be too attractive for the sprinters' teams to allow a breakaway to succeed. And with Mario Cipollini making a cameo appearance on the race, it looked like the perfect day for Robbie McEwen to match the great Italian's mark of 12 stage wins on the tour. Yeah, two kilometres to go now, around yet another roundabout. The leaky gas rider's done his day, done it well, if you ask me. Now he brought other riders. And in fact, we've got Sued O'Grady coming up on the left of our picture now. CSC, that's a typical move by O'Grady. Even with his uh, fractured vertebrae, he's obviously feeling better. A good cheeky move by O'Grady, but I think Quickstep have him under control. Well, Stuart O'Grady has tried to catch everybody unawares, but this afternoon, Team Quickstep have got themselves a big organisation. Tom Boone and Phil there has got three riders in front of him. He's right on the wheel of Jimmy Casper. He won't be too happy about the Frenchman getting involved in his line there. O'Grady over to the left-hand side is not going to ride away no, from the front shame. end of the main field this afternoon because Quickstep this afternoon are trying to get a perfect lead out for big Tom Boonen. Well, it's only taken 10 days of the Tour de France to get it organised for Tom Boonen. Maybe they've got the blue boys on the front. Boonen is in the white jersey, remember, of the world champion. You can see him tucked in. And also we've got a confidence rider, Casper, just in front of him. Leaky gas taking Paolini over to the left of our picture. Torhoshoff is in the darker green jersey trying to get it. Eric Zabel is mixing it too. And I've just seen McEwen dead centre of your picture. He's not in a great position right now but he always delays his sprint until the last possible moment here now the lead out starts for Hushoff on the left but Zabel's got in the train there now and still no launch of Tom Bonin in the white jersey Hushoff is the second wheel here as Hushoff strides now can he come through and Bonin's going to launch down the middle he goes on the far left of our picture and uh, on the far side and still boxed in I think is McEwen can't get out he's all over the place and can't get out as Bonin now comes on the left and he's got a long one here. Tom Bonan taking on Eric Zabel. Then comes Oscar Freire. And now comes Robbie McEwen. Where does he find the strength from? Oh, and I don't know who won that. And I think Robbie thinks it's Oscar Freire. And Robbie was right. As he said afterwards, you're not always sure you've won, but you always know when you've lost, although it took a photo to confirm it. No change in the overall standings after stage nine. Sergei Honshar was going to lead the race into the Pyrenees, although few people expected him to lead it out. And one of the riders fancied to challenge for the yellow jersey was another Australian on McEwen's team. Uncomplicated, good-natured, strong and gutsy, Cad Evans could be one of the serious names to emerge as the Pyrenees sort the nearly men from the really men, although he'll only admit to modest ambitions. Just ride a better tour than I did last year. Actually, the man behind is Cadell Evans Cadell coming Evans across there. That's a good move. Last year was his first tour, but he rode it like he'd seen it all before, often on the wheel of Ulrich and Armstrong or powering a breakaway. His efforts were rewarded in GC. I think yeah, last year you saw him did his first Tour de France, rode into the top 10, and he finished eighth overall with a fantastic tour. This year you're going to look at a lot different with Lance not being here, it changes multiple aspects. Chris Horner is Evan's right-hand man in the mountains. The problem is he doesn't have a left-hand man. If he does produce on the major climbs, it'll be without the help of a big team. Yeah, I prefer it, I prefer it that way, yeah, less pressure, less stress, and I ride my race accordingly, not relying on the team and not relying on my team to do a lot. That's a little bit how I rode anyway, but um, I, I sort of, that's some sort of force to do that. Unfortunately, this year I've got this guy over here, Chris Horner, to help me out. It's going to be a big help, hopefully. Um, but, um, yeah, without Discovery, it's going to make it a much more open race, and whether CSC or um, T-Mobile want to take over that role that they played in the past is, you know, the race is the race to tell. Look at the acceleration now coming from Popovich. They know that everybody's on the rivet. Lance He's shouted at him then. The speed on the last climb is going to be incredibly different because now you're not going to have a team completely dedicated to making it as fast as, as what it had been last year at the beginning of the climb. And then you don't have a rider like uh, Armstrong going away from guys at that speed anymore either. So that's going to slow it down. So now you change that speed a little bit on the climb. You had hopefully Cadell comes in with a little bit better form than he had last year. And so that's going to allow him to hopefully be a podium contention or top five contention, is what I believe. So here comes Cadell Evans. This man is finishing the tour strong. And as for another teammate's opinion. Yeah, I mean, now it's the time for Cadell to uh, not only consolidate his place in the top 10, but uh, hopefully to move up and um, I think maybe 
best for our team, take the jersey in the Alps maybe, that uh, we're not stuck with it in the transitional stages. Well, the first nine stages were all about the little sprinter, but now De Vitamon will fully turn their attention to Cadell Evans. It's a real opportunity. In fact, he may never get a chance like it again.